In this video, we're going to create a simple spaced repetition schedule in Notion. The first thing we've done is we've gone and created a new database. And we're just going to do some renaming of columns here. So we're just going to call this topic. So this would be a spaced repetition schedule to review topics. And this second column in here, we're actually going to change this to last at last edited time and we're going to call this last review okay we're going to create another column this one is going to be a select column and this one is going to be titled rank now you can call this whatever you want i just like to call it rank and we're basically going to input a sequence of numbers in this column I'm going to put the numbers 0 through 7. Uh, you can put whatever numbers you would like, but basically these numbers represent uh, the spacing intervals. So something that is on rank 0 will be reviewed next in 0 days. Something that is on rank 1 will be reviewed next in 1 day, and so on. So we've got our topic, and let's just put some values in here. Topic 1. Topic two and topic three all right so we've got three columns and the only other column we actually need for this is a formula column so we're going to add in a formula column and we're going to call this next review date And the formula itself is quite simple. All we're going to do is we're going to take the last review date and add the number from rank to that. So what we want this to be is a date add formula, date add. And we want to take the date from last review. So property, uh, last review. So that's the date we're starting with comma, the number of days that we want to add is going to be rank, but rank is not a number, so we're going to need to convert that to a number, so to number, and then we want the property of rank, that's how many days we're adding, and we need to specify that it is days, not months or years or something else. Okay, so we've added basically the last review date to, we've added the number of days of whatever that value is in rank, and we press done, and we can see the next review date. Now this is basically the way this works is when you um, open up a topic, so let's open up topic one, and we study it, any changes we make are automatically going to update the last review date. and so every time we edit topic one, we are essentially reviewing it. And when we review it and recall it correctly, we can change the rank up one. So if we recall it correctly today, we can change it to one. And you'll see the next review date has moved to tomorrow. And then you'll also notice that when I update the rank, it automatically ups updates the last review time as well. So the benefit of this is it means that we can we don't actually need to edit anything on the page. We can just change the rank in order to change the last review date. Okay. So there are some ways that we can view this information. First of all, we're going to create a calendar view. And when we create a calendar view, we're going to press these three ellipses up here and I'm going to choose calendar by and we're going to choose next review date so this is showing us when the next review date is it's currently the 30th of october and topic one and topic two are being reviewed tomorrow on the 31st and topic three is being reviewed on the 6th okay so that's one way we can view the information we can do the same thing with the timeline so if we create a timeline uh, again, we can do the timeline by this date so that we can see uh, what is coming up in future. So again, press those three ellipses, timeline by, 
next review date. Okay, but what if we want to see only the things that are needing to be reviewed today? Well, if we go back to, or actually let's create a new view. Let's create a list of you this time. We're going to create a list of you. And we've got our three topics. And currently what is being shown, if we open up properties, currently we're seeing the last review date. And we could probably show the rank as well, just for our reference. Um, but what we're going to do here is we're actually going to filter out of filter where the next review date is now there are two ways we could do this. We could make it is today. So that it will only show things that are due today and that's nothing. Or we could say is on or before today. And the benefit of doing this is it catches anything that we forgot to review in the past. So things that are due today and things that are reviewed, needed to be reviewed in the past will all appear here. Um, and if we just go back to our original view, just to make some of those things appear, so change the rank down to zero for a couple of these and go back to our list view. Okay, we've got topic one, topic three. We can see when they were last reviewed and their rank. Okay, so that's everything that was due today. But there's another feature that's been added to Notion recently called grouping, which enables us to group things in a number of different ways. So we could group it by rank. And the benefit of grouping it by rank is we can see and work on those things which are the newest first. So the things on the lowest rank are the, probably going to be the topics that need the most work. So we can start with them and work our way down. Um, and you can see also if we take topic three, for example, which is rank zero, if we move it into rank one, it's going to disappear because when we move it to rank one, its due date is now tomorrow. Uh, but instead of grouping by rank, we can also group by date. So we're going to group by next review date. And we can choose relative day, week, month, year. I'm going to choose week uh, so that we can see which weeks we're going to have to review things in. All right. Now at the moment, there's only one thing appearing, but there are three things in our list. And the reason that's occurring is because we've got a filter switched on saying that we only want to see things due today. So let's uh, remove that filter. And now we can see all three topics. One is due this week, two are due next week, uh, because Sunday is the start of a week. Okay. So if we were to open up topic two and uh, make that rank eight, we'll just add another element to that list. We'll see that that appears in another week's time. So you can see another benefit of this system. If we go back to our original default view, another benefit of this system is if we hit the limit at any point, we can just add on another rank level. Uh, and just a bit of a recap, the way that spaced repetition works, if I was on rank eight and I practiced it and I made significant mistakes or even made any mistakes, I'll drop it back down to zero. Or if I made minor mistakes, I might just drop it down a couple of levels, depending on what I feel like is more appropriate. We could drop it back down to zero. And again, it's true for review today. Uh, the last thing about this system, the last benefit of this system is that when we have the rank zero this is going to tell us in how many days to review it and this last review date is going to tell me how many days since i made an edit so let's uh, make that rank two instead it's currently due in two days if i open up topic one and make some changes make some take some notes maybe the last review date is going to update and that's going to push out my next review date but when I'm taking notes here, I'm essentially reviewing the topic. So I'm not actually uh, affecting my rank or my next review date at all by making notes because I'm just doing an interim review and my rank is still two. So it's still going to be two days till I see it. Anyway, I hope you found some use in this video for a simple custom spaced repetition schedule. If you've got any comments, feel free to leave them in, uh, leave them below. And don't forget to like the video.